what are some of your difficulties in competing with the traditional healthcare system? And we can start with you again, Rachel. So is it also to, I wanted to add like perceptions that you people are, that you're receiving from people in terms of like, are they like, this isn't, I don't trust this. Like how do you develop trust within the community with the services that you're offering? Okay, yes. Great question. I started laughing when you were like, what are the troubles you're having with the industrialized healthcare system? Like everything. Um, yeah, everything. Well, first off, before I like fully answer that, I just wanted to shout out to Sarah Lynn and Michelle and thank you both for bringing disability justice into the conversation. Um, as a community herbalist who is also chronically ill and disabled, disabled, um, it's really important to bring that into the conversation because I think when we're like, when we're talking about health autonomy, we're not just talking about people having access to free healthcare. I mean, that's important. Like, of course, that's important. We have to unshackle healthcare from profit. Um, that's what we're talking about in this space. But we also have to redefine all of it because our healthcare system is also racist. Our healthcare system is also ableist. Um, we're built on this idea that you're fixed or you're broken and being broken is really bad and we all want to be fixed and fixed is this very narrowly defined idea of what it means to be this I don't know white neurotypical like heterosexual male whatever like whatever those definitions are around and so I think like health autonomy is, is so much more than just having access um, it's very much about people getting to define what wellness is um, for their own body um, that we all have that right um, it's about building these resilient networks of care where nobody gets left behind um, and care being um, something that, yeah, that we get to define what that looks like too. So I think, um, yeah, I mean, part of what we're up against, and, and I don't actually know if this is true, I need to check the legalities on this, but I think up until at least a couple of years ago, if not still today, I think it's technically still illegal to call yourself an herbalist in Tennessee and South Carolina. I should double check on that. but. Uh, well, I mean, so we're up against that, like we're up against um, the medical industrial complex disregarding um, other forms of healing in our community. We're certainly up against that. Um, I think like as a community apothecary, um, that's not something that we've had to deal with in our community. I think a lot of people are really open to, um, to working with, uh, like Izzy and Brendan were saying, you know, working with complementary modalities. Um, we certainly aren't going around uh, telling people that all they need to do is, you know, take this one herb or get some sunlight and they're gonna be fine. I mean, that's something, I would say something, that's something that we've been up against at herbalists in our community is we have a lot, I've seen a lot of alternative practitioners saying a lot of uh, ableist and privileged things during this pandemic. I'm sure y'all have seen that in your own community too, um, where we've had a lot of mostly white um, alternative practitioners telling people that COVID-19 is not real or that they don't need to wear masks and they just need to get a lot of vitamin D and eat a good diet and they're gonna be fine. And if they get sick, it's a personal failing. And so we've like had that narrative um, I've seen in our community and that's something that we've bumped up against and definitely had to um, push back, push back against with folks. But, you know, I think in general, um, yeah, I think in general, just to speak back to like what Izzy and Brendan we're saying, I mean, my vision for what I want for all of our communities um, is I want a healthcare system that's worker owned, that's integrative, right? That has cardiologists working next to acupuncturists um, and herbalists that um, like where we can have all of that, um, all of that community, community run. So yeah, I'm trying to think of what else to say. I mean, all of, yeah, all of the challenges of, of working against that machine, um, our healthcare machine, are, are real in our community. And um, I think the other biggest thing that, that we're working with just in East Tennessee and in the South in general is we still have a lot of people that don't believe that this virus is real. And so in our community, the virus is running rampant right now. We like, we, nothing has been closed down. They're trying to open school up. Um, a lot of people aren't wearing masks. Um, or following social distancing protocols. And so, you know, we're, 
we're feeling challenged just trying to like meet the demand that we're already seeing and knowing that it's probably not going to get better anytime soon. Um, so just trying our best to get as much medicine as, as we can made um, and just be trying to uh, equip our people with, with the skills that they need um, to take care of themselves and, and their community. So I'll stop there. <laughs> Um, I definitely have experience with distrust, um, just kind of off the strength alone that our trainings are not backed up by an institution of like American Red Cross or, you know, some sort of hospital or have some big funding behind our name. So I think a lot of times that can cause some like distrust. Um, because what a lot of people fail to realize is that in, in the grand scheme of the planet and human activity on the planet, institutions have been around for not that long and we've been taking care of each other for the entire time. And I think sometimes people just don't realize that. And, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, systemic there's a lot of systems that have showed us that we cannot trust black people and we can't trust the words that come out of our mouth and that we're not valuable, we're not credible. And that happens on a large scale, but also within the community and within these communities of colors, just, just automatically don't listen, don't want to hear what we have to say. Um, and I think, you know, we're never going to be anywhere we don't want to be. We're never gonna force anything down anyone's throat, but I think we also try to approach everything with compassion and know that we've all been to some extent conditioned to to perpetuate these systems in our own way. Like nobody is perfect. And I can even think of examples in myself where I perpetuate, you know, anti-black systems, you know what I'm saying, towards myself. So I can't really, I just have to have patience and compassion when I'm dealing with that because I know that there's so much to unlearn from a really, really broad perspective. And especially when we're thinking about community health, putting the the members of, giving the mic to the people in that community and letting them write the dose and letting them write the treatment plan for themselves. I think it's something new that a lot of people don't have experience doing. And so I think through that, the biggest takeaway is just to be patient and be compassionate because everybody is trying to dismantle not only systems externally, but systems internally of all type of stuff. So yeah, that's all I really have to say about that.